Good morning. It is Friday the 14th of June, and we're going to go straight into the King James Bible, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 12. These are the statutes and judgments which you shall observe to do in the land, which the Lord God of thy fathers give thee to possess it, all the days that you live upon the earth. You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills, under every green tree. And you shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn down their groves with fire. And you shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. You shall not do so unto the Lord your God, but unto the place which your Lord God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there. Even unto his habitation shall you seek, and thither thou shalt come. And thither thou shalt bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and your heave offerings of your hand and your vows and your free will offerings and the firstlings of the herd and of your flocks. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God. You shall rejoice in all that you put your hand unto, ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. You shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. For you are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance, which the Lord your God giveth you. But when you go over Jordan and dwell in the land which your Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in safety, then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall you bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, and your heave offering of your hand, and all your choice vows which you vow unto the Lord. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, ye and your sons and your daughters and your manservants and your maidservants, and the Levite that is within your gates, for as much as he hath no part inheritance with you. Take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest, but in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes. There thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, and there shalt thou do all that I command thee. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates. Whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee, the unclean and the clean may eat thereof, as of the roebuck, as of the heart. Only you shall not eat the blood, you shall pour it upon the earth as water, that thou mayest not eat within thy gates the tithe of the corn, or of the wine, or of the oil, or of the firstlings, or of thy herds of thy flock, nor any of the vows which thou vowest, nor thy free will offerings, or heave offering of thine hand. But thou mayest eat them before the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and maidservant, and the Levite that is within thy gates. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God in all that thou puttest thine hands unto. Take heed to thyself, that thou forsake not the Levite, as long as thou livest upon the earth. When the Lord thy God shall enlarge thy border, as he hath promised thee, and thou shalt say, I will eat flesh, because the soul longeth to eat flesh, thou mayest eat flesh, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. If the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to put his name there be too far from thee, then thou shalt kill of thy herd and thy flock, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, as I have commanded thee. And thou shalt eat it in thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, 
even as the roebuck and the heart is eaten. So thou shalt eat them, the unclean and the clean shall be of them alike. Only be sure that thou eat not the blood, for the blood is the life, and thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh. Thou shalt not eat it, thou shalt pour it upon the earth as water. Thou shalt not eat it, that it may go well with thee, and thy children after thee. When thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Only the holy things which thou hast, and thy vows thou shalt take, and go into the place which the Lord shall choose. And thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, the flesh and the blood, upon the altar of the Lord thy God. And the blood of thy sacrifices shall be poured out upon the altar of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt eat the flesh. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee for ever, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them, after they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their God, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth, they have done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Amen. I just want to say that when we talk about the robot, the, the roebuck and the heart, we're talking about deer, okay? When it says eat the heart, he doesn't mean hearts. He means heart, H-A-R-T, deer. Um, which should please all the hunters. God has sanctioned it. Now, we are talking about Mosaic laws here. These are the Mosaic laws that God gave for the Israelites to live a goodly life because of their stiff neckedness, all right? He said, because you will not bend and, and yield to the will of God, you continually, they continually rebelled against God, all right? They, they, you know, they walked away from God. They rebelled against him. Look how they made the golden calf and they worshiped it when Moses was only gone for 40 days and 40 nights, you know? I mean, come on. After everything they'd seen and witnessed and followed, they couldn't just hang on for 40 days? Do you see how weak man is? So God gave them all of these things to follow, and they followed them as best as they could, and they kept repeating it as best as they could because they sinned, and so they had to go back and make atonement for their sins through the sacrificial system, which, by the way, is going to be reinstituted in the beginning of tribulations. The third temple will be built. Is it third? Yeah, third temple will be built. And sacrifices will be made. The Jewish people will resume that system that they've lacked for 2,000 years since the temple was destroyed in A.D. 70 in Jerusalem. They have not had a temple. And there will be a holy seat in there. The ark will return. Because it says that the Antichrist will sit upon it in the three and a half year period. And there will be a desolation, desecration. And there will be a des desolation because God will leave it. And then he will begin to pour out his wrath in the second three and a half years of the tribulations. So yes, that system will be reinstated and they're ready to go. They said they can build that temple in nine months, probably quicker, I should think, if they really put themselves behind it. They have all the implements ready. I've told you this before. They now have red heifers. 
They have the land to sacrifice the red heifers upon on the Mount of Olives. They are good to go. Their Levites are in training, direct descendants from the Levites that are mentioned here. They have Levite priests in training, ready for the temple, knowing all the temple procedures, knowing all of this. I, I have no doubt that they probably memorized the Torah exactly the same as they did in these days. Such is the dedication of these men, staying true to the word of God. Unfortunately, they don't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but they will. But they will. Because they will cry out, Lord, save us, and he will come. And to the very day from the beginning of tribulations, to the very day, we will know when Jesus Christ is coming, if you're still around. I pray that everyone listening is not around and that we go in the rapture. Because to endure tribulations is not something that we want to do. So, here we see also that God does not expect us to tolerate other gods and other religions. He says, destroy them. Now, this is an unchanging God, okay? So, here's where the, the fine subtlety and the differences occur. This is a statement of God. He is a jealous God to put no other gods before him. He wants these gods destroyed, burned, thrown in the fire, smashed to pieces, thrown in the river, just as Moses did with the golden calf. Pounded down into powder and, and thrown away. All that gold, just wasted, gone. Because it was a false god. And God is the same today as he was yesterday and will be tomorrow. All the false gods that exist in this world we need to smash down and destroy. Maybe not literally, because that would just be open war, but figuratively, spiritually, we're to turn our backs on them. And certainly in reality, we are to follow the one and true God, the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. Or sometimes people say Abraham, Jacob, and Israel, because Isaac was renamed Israel. So the one true God, the one living God. You see, all these other gods, they actually bow down before their statues and believe that they are gods. Gods that were made by hand, by man's hand, and, and can be destroyed and knocked down. I mean, how could you do that? How could you believe in a system like that? But they do. But they do. It's an amazing thing how man can get led so far astray and, and, and fight to the death to defend what he believes in. Because the, the power of Satan is so strong that they just will not yield. They're so stiff-necked. They're so stubborn. They want to be right. They don't want to yield to the one true God. And yet amongst these people, there are those that are yielding. There are those in China. There are those in India. There are those in, in the Asian continent that are yielding and getting down on their knees before God, our God. And they are converting. And they are oppressed. And in spite of that oppression, they remain loyal and faithful to the death. They are being persecuted to death. Their churches are being burned. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for them. God is a loving God. Yes, he is. But he is a just and a fair God. And he will not tolerate all these other gods and false religions. And he does this because he loves you and he wants to save you and bring you home to him. And I love you too. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your shares and your likes and especially your comments. Speak to you tomorrow. Bye for now.